Welcome to the next part of the module, which covers Java built-in monitor objects. These mechanisms can be used to synchronize and schedule the interaction of multiple threads in a concurrent program. This part motivates the need for built-in monitor objects by fixing the simple but buggy concurrent program shown in an earlier part of the module. This program contained two threads, a producer and a consumer, that incurred race conditions when calling the put and take methods of buggy queue. To fix the problems with the buggy queue, we'll use a Java built-in monitor object that enables the threads to communicate by passing messages via a properly synchronized simple blocking queue. A monitor is a classic concurrency control mechanism that can be used to coordinate the synchronization and scheduling of multiple threads that access and interact in a critical section, as described at this link. In particular, a monitor allows threads to have both mutual exclusion and the ability to block while waiting for certain conditions to become true. Monitors also have a mechanism for notifying other threads that conditions they're waiting on have been met, so the other threads can continue their processing accordingly. Before we show the complete Java built-in monitor object solution, we outline a partial solution to the race condition problems with the original buggy queue. This solution, called buggy synchronized queue, uses Java synchronized methods to specify sections of code in an object that can't be accessed concurrently by multiple threads. In particular, we'll add the Java synchronized keyword to the buggy queue's put and take methods, which has two effects. First, it's not possible for two invocations of put and take on the same object to interleave. When one thread is executing a synchronized put method on an object, all other threads that invoke synchronized methods for the same object will block until the first thread is done with the object. Second, when a synchronized method exits, it automatically establishes a happens before relationship with any subsequent invocation of a synchronized method for the same object, which ensures that changes to the state of the object are visible to all threads. This link provides more information on the syntax and semantics of Java synchronized methods. Although using synchronized ensures that put and take critical sections can't be accessed concurrently by multiple threads, there are still some problems with this solution. For example, the take method will waste CPU cycles by spinning in a busy wait, throwing the index out of bounds exception whenever the remove method is called in an empty array list. Likewise, the put method could continue adding new messages to the array list until heap memory is exhausted. This link provides more information on busy waiting and outlines some solutions to the problem one of which is addressed by Java built-in monitor objects, which we'll cover next. All objects in Java can be used as built-in monitor objects, which support two types of thread synchronization and scheduling, mutual exclusion and cooperation, as described at this link. Mutual exclusion enables multiple threads to access and update shared data without race conditions. It's supported in the Java virtual machine via an object's entrance queue and synchronized methods. Cooperation enables threads to coordinate and schedule interactions. It's supported in the Java Virtual Machine via an object's wait queue and notification mechanisms. These mechanisms implement a variant of the monitor object pattern described at this link and covered in upcoming videos. This pattern ensures that only one method runs within an object and allows an object's methods to cooperatively schedule their execution sequences. We'll apply Java's built-in monitor objects to implement a better solution to the buggy synchronized queues showed earlier. In particular, this solution, which is called simple blocking queue, improves upon buggy queue by preventing race conditions from occurring when put and take methods are called concurrently by multiple threads. It also improves upon buggy synchronized queue by preventing busy waiting from wasting CPU cycles. To make simple blocking queue a monitor object, we'll first add the synchronized keyword to its put and take methods, following the approach described in this link. Although this is not the complete solution, it's the starting point to ensure access to the queue's put and take methods is serialized, similar to the access protocol for an airplane restroom discussed in an earlier video. Java also supports synchronized statements, often called synchronized blocks which acquire and release a lock within the scope of a statement. In the synchronized statement example on this slide, the lock is a simple blocking queue object itself, 
which is the intrinsic lock that's associated with every Java object. Although programming synchronized blocks requires more effort than programming synchronized methods, they can enhance concurrency by enabling fine-grained serialization that minimizes the scope over which the locks are held. For example, in this implementation of put, the entire synchronized method is serialized, whereas in this implementation, only the synchronized statement is serialized using the intrinsic lock. Likewise, it's possible for a synchronized statement to use an explicit lock object that's different than the object's intrinsic lock, which provides further opportunities for fine-grained serialization. This link has more information on intrinsic locks, explicit locks, synchronized methods, and synchronized statements in Java. As discussed earlier, synchronized methods and statements are only a partial solution. Therefore, Java's built-in monitor objects also provide waiting and notification mechanisms that help threads cooperatively schedule their interactions. Each built-in monitor object inherits the wait, notify, and notify all methods from the Java object class, which are similar to the await, signal, and signal all methods defined by Java condition objects described in this earlier video. Each Java monitor object has one wait queue and one entrance queue. All calls to wait are done in the wait queue, and all notify and notify all calls also apply to this queue. Having only one wait queue and a built-in monitor object is more restrictive than programming with Java condition objects, which allow an object to have multiple wait queues, as shown in this earlier video. Some consequences of this restriction will be discussed in this video's summary. Android's Java Virtual Machine implements built-in monitor object synchronizers via POSIX mechanisms. For example, an entrance queue is implemented as a POSIX mutual exclusion or mutex lock, augmented to support recursive locking semantics, which protects shared data from race conditions, as described at this link. A wait queue is implemented as a POSIX condition variable, which allows one or more threads to block on the wait queue of a monitor object until some conditions become true, as described at this link. POSIX condition variables are conceptually similar to Java condition objects, discussed in our earlier video, though their implementations differ since they're written in different programming languages. For example, condition objects are written largely in Java, and POSIX condition variables are written in C, as shown at these path names. Now that we've provided an overview of Java built-in monitor objects, we visually analyze their behavior in the context of our simple blocking queue example. As shown in this diagram, each Java monitor object has one entrance queue associated with its monitor lock and one wait queue associated with its implicit monitor condition, as described at this link. When thread T1 calls take on an empty simple blocking queue, it enters the monitor object. Assuming no other thread is active inside the monitor object, T1 acquires a monitor lock and starts to run the code in buggy synchronized queue's critical section, where it will determine that the underlying ArrayList MQ is empty. As long as the MQ list is empty, T1 will wait on the monitor condition. Calling wait on the monitor condition atomically releases the monitor lock and blocks the current thread until a call to notify or notify all is made on the same object. In the context of our concurrent producer-consumer example, Assume that thread T2 calls put on simple blocking queue while thread T1 is blocked on its monitor condition, causing T2 to enter the monitor object, acquire the monitor lock, add the message to the MQ list, call notify all to wake up any and all threads waiting on the monitor condition, and then release the monitor lock and exit the monitor object. At this point, thread T1 will be unblocked from the monitor condition, reacquire the monitor lock, and remove and return the first item in the MQ array list which will cause T1 to release the monitor lock and leave the monitor object. Now that we've examined the behavior of a monitor object visually, we'll show some simple blocking queue Java code and discuss several implementation considerations. Within a synchronized method, a thread can wait for a condition to become true using the guarded suspension pattern, described at this link which requires both a lock to be acquired and a condition to be satisfied before an operation can be executed. For example, the synchronized take method implicitly acquires the monitor lock, checks the ArrayList MQ size, 
and blocks if it's empty. A call to wait should almost always be invoked inside of a loop that tests for the condition being waited on. A loop is needed since a waiting thread can't assume that a notification it received was for the particular condition it's waiting on. It also can't assume that the condition is even still true due to the non-deterministic operations of other threads accessing the monitor object concurrently, as described at this link. A thread blocking on wait won't continue until another thread notifies it that the condition may be true. For example, a take call blocked because the ArrayList MQ is empty won't wake up until put notifies it that there's a message to process. When a thread blocked on wait is notified, it wakes up, obtains the monitor lock, and checks to see if the condition has been satisfied. If so, it exits the loop and continues processing the code in the method. When it's done, it releases the monitor lock and leaves the monitor object. For example, when a blocked take call is awakened after put calls notify all, it checks to make sure that the MQ array list is no longer empty and then removes and returns the first item in the list as it leaves the monitor's critical section. In summary, any Java object may be used as a built-in monitor object by marking its methods with a synchronized keyword or marking portions of its code as synchronized statements as described at this link. Although these synchronized methods can help, they're only a partial solution since they don't address problems with busy waiting. Therefore, Java built-in monitor objects also provide waiting and notification mechanisms. Although Java built-in monitor objects are relatively simple, they have some subtleties and limitations, such as nested monitor lockout, which occurs when a first thread acquires a nested object's monitor lock without relinquishing the monitor lock already held by the object containing the nested object, thereby preventing a second thread from acquiring the containing object's monitor lock. This link describes the nested monitor lockout problem and outlines patterns that can be applied to remedy it. There are also some subtleties related to the wait queue associated with a Java built-in monitor object, which supports both notify and notify all methods. Notify wakes up a single thread waiting on the monitor condition, whereas notify all wakes up all threads waiting on the condition. This link describes how to choose which method to use. There are situations where a program may need to tightly control the order in which threads are unblocked when a condition changes, rather than relying on the arbitrary built-in semantics of Java's built-in monitor notification mechanism. This link describes a pattern for explicitly designating which thread should proceed. Yet another limitation with Java built-in monitor objects is that they lack certain useful features provided by Rantrant locks. For example, there's no equivalent to try lock or lock interruptibly on a built-in monitor object, which is one reason why Android and the Java Util concurrent package often use Rantrant locks instead of built-in Java monitor objects for their synchronization needs. Although Java monitor objects are relatively easy to use for simple concurrent programs, it's often the case that production software may need more than Java's built-in monitor objects. This link provides more information on the broader range of synchronization and scheduling mechanisms in the Java Util Concurrent and Java Util Concurrent Locks package. It's also common for Android applications to use its concurrency frameworks than to use Java built-in monitor objects directly. These frameworks implement a broader range of concurrency patterns and mechanisms as summarized at this link and described later in this section.